Well, Alan, if Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the hottest young driver on the circuit, Jerry Nadeau is not far behind. He won two races last week. He's qualified on the outside pole today, and tonight he has perhaps his best ever shot at a win. But the 600 is an endurance race, a test of stamina and your equipment. Nadeau has had problems all year long getting the results that he deserves. Bottom line, if they don't beat themselves, Jerry Nadeau and his team might find their way into the top ten by the end of the night and just maybe into victory lane. Ken, we have a new leader in the Coca-Cola 600. This is a moment ago while we were in the break. Dale Earnhardt Jr. appeared to slow a little bit off of turn two. And Jerry Nadeau went blasting on by. Well, then he picked the pace right back up. I don't know whether he was just fighting, maybe looking at the line that the uh, 25 cars running on the racetrack or what, but he's still sticking right with Nadeau. Well, it happened right when he was beside the 22 car of Ward Burton that he'd been trying to put a lap down for a long while. And they got awfully close together coming off the second corner. Earnhardt Jr. got out of the throttle just a tad, stayed out of the throttle long enough, and Nadeau went blasting on by. Nadeau, the leader, is in on pit road. Tony Furr had called him in. There are going to be no adjustments here. Jerry Nadeau has been very happy with this car. They do have some planned adjustments to make with air pressure when it gets a little cooler on the track, but they're not making them now. Down around to the left side car is up on the jack tires are on looks like a good stop for nadu fuel is in oh. the engine shut off got it fired he's away but a costly stop stop guys 16 seconds stop great stop go jerry go they learn hard to turn coming around kind of racing jerry nadu back off into the corner shouldn't be a contest because of that little glitch that they do had trying to leave the pit lane where is he maybe it's going to be more of a contest than i thought yeah nadu's going down the back straightaway he'll he'll take the uh, advantage he has he's already into turn three and earnhardt just now getting there so jerry nadu Gets off of pit road ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr. despite the little hiccup there when he dumped the clutch. Exciting racing at Lowe's Motor Speedway in the 41st annual Coca-Cola 600. We've already covered 100 miles and for the moment Tony Stewart has the advantage. He just swept around Jeremy Mayfield after those first pit stops to take first place. Stewart now the leader. Six lead changes. Nary a caution. And 167, well, that would give us a new record. But there's a long way to go and a lot of pit stops, and everyone is still running. Back top side with Alan Vesper. With a new leader, Ken, it is Jerry Nadeau sweeping by Tony Stewart off of turn number four to reassume the top spot. Nadeau out in front as we are just across the 100-mile mark. Caution-free so far. We've had seven now. Lead changes among six different drivers. Nadeau getting instructions from oh, oh, Stewart. Oh, wow. man, I thought he was gone. Going for him. Jerry Nadeau is almost beyond imagination. His best finish this year, 13th. His career best finish in Winston Cup, 5th. A couple of years ago, hardly nobody even knew who this guy was. Then a fellow named Tom Cotter took a liking to Jerry Nadeau, put together a sponsorship deal for him with Michael Holligan, got him hooked up with the Hendrick operation. And look at the results out front today do you know that jerry nadu in his winston cup career before today had only led a total of 14 laps total he has far surpassed that here in the coca-cola 600. let's get an update on nadu's machine down on pit road the one guy who's got a smile in jerry nadu's fit is the team owner rick hendrick he's led more laps today than in his entire winston cup career you've got to be one proud owner huh yeah, he's doing a heck of a job. We're just trying to get him to pace himself, and he says he's really comfortable. So he's doing a heck of a job. It's been a good two weeks for Jerry Nadeau. Tony Furr, the crew chief, just told him, you're so fast coming up on these lap cars. You've got to be careful. When you lap these cars, you're so fast getting by them. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure I heard you, but, you know, he's running two or three tenths quicker than the other guys. And, uh, we just want to be there at the end of this thing. He is just, he really has adapted to Charlotte. Tony's given him a good, good car. And I want to tell my mom and dad hello at home. I know my dad wish he was here to see this. And this is a great performance for the 25 team. And Papa Joe is uh, listed as the owner of this car. 
Would we consider this an update if Jerry Nadeau wins tonight? Well, maybe so, but he's doing a fabulous job so far. A quarter of the way into the 41st Coca-Cola 600. Well, Jerry Nadeau stopped. There was a bit of a glitch changing the left rear tire. They were down and away, and then the concern was, did they get all the lug nuts on? Well, they have watched it closely here under the caution laps and our huge sigh of relief in these pits. All the lug nuts are there. Jerry Nadeau is okay and in third position. See if he goes after Mayfield pretty fast. He dispensed with the lap traffic of Sterling Marlin into the corner. And now the top two are clear. And up to speed on the back straightaway. Jerry Nadeau hung up in traffic there, but he pulls to the inside now the back straightaway. Down into turn three. Back into the car, Wiggles just a little bit on Nadeau. Look at Earnhardt. If you close your eyes and just listen for the crowd, you'll know if he finishes the pass. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> they love Dale Earnhardt here in Charlotte. Hometown boy drives the way they like to see a fella drive. Look at him. That entire audience is applauding Dale Earnhardt's Dale Earnhardt the Elder. To get you for that. Yeah, he is. Seventh leader of the night is Dale Earnhardt. Now Nadeau pressing Mayfield for second. Mayfield has a very fast car down the straightaway. You can see he's a little bit quicker than Earnhardt on the straight. Fourth place Tony Stewart trapped behind a couple of lap cars. Oh, oh Mayfield maybe. loosening Earnhardt up in two. The intimidator Three got wide. intimidated. Well, somebody's going to have to give. Sparks showering from the cars. Well, it's not going to be Nadeau. What a drive. Right out on the inside there to take over the lead. Biggest knife of his entire racing career. Jerry Nadeau back in the lead. Mayfield for second. The three cars behind those two are all the lap down. Then you get to Tony Stewart, the fourth place car, and Mark Martin, who's just gone by him. So put Martin to fourth and Stewart back to fifth. Ahead from Stewart's machine and Martin, who's just overtaken him. And the lap traffic that's got them bottled up and separated from the front three. Now the racetrack is in total shape now, so it ought to be very consistent. We'll see who has the better car. Just caught a glimpse of uh, ahead of Dale Earnhardt's car when we were riding with Stewart, really wiggling on the top side of turn four as he tried to get off that corner. Look at it. Wow. The back end just shaking back and forth. Yeah, he's probably talking to him right now and saying, this set of tires is not exactly the way I want them. So we're going to have to make some adjustments. And everybody is waiting for the racetrack. You can see the lights are starting to come up on the cars. They're beginning to glitter. So the racetrack's going to get better, and the cars that are loose will get better. They do the fastest on the racetrack at the moment. There's Ricky Rudd running back in ninth position. And Tony Furr has just called to Nadeau and said, don't punish your tires. You just got brand new tires on. Take care of those tires. He doesn't want him to run off with this thing, even if Nadeau can. We have a field summary running up the left of your screen to let you know where your favorite driver is. At this point, 120 laps into the 400 to make up this 600-mile event. I gotta tell you, that's hero material right there. That eight car just won't give up. He's going to the outside down into turn one. And here comes Junior to the outside of Dad. Flashbulbs exploding in the grandstand with a picture of the two Earnhardts racing for the lead in the Coca-Cola 600. You don't think that lightning in the background didn't catch those drivers' eyes either. You can see the sparks starting to fly off the back of the cars. They're there in the daytime, but they're really prevalent at night. Dale Earnhardt Jr. led most of the first 47 laps of this event. They do on the outside for second. Wow. We've seen Dale Earnhardt's car be inconsistent in its handling tonight. He's been really good in a couple segments of the race and not so good in a couple of others. Well, let's remember, too, we've got new tires on the car, and he's a veteran, and he knows. Take good care of those tires on the very first lap, and it'll serve you well in a long run. And Tony Furr has probably told the 25 of they do, don't worry about the tires. Go after it. It's, it's getting close to the halfway mark now. If you have something, pull it out of the half. 21 laps to halfway. Nadu looking wide. Turn two. Holy cow. Get a band. Get a band. Clear all around. Not one, but two, our hearts. Clear all around. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Now get your pace back. And Dad by Junior. 
Back to second. Junior lost two spots because he was down low and he's had Great a problem job, with Jared. the loose car. Get the rhythm back now. Be patient. And they see Jerry Nadeau, crew chief and spotter, talking to their driver. Dale Jarrett currently running in fourth spot. Barely see him in the picture. A bunch of lap cars in the way. Jarrett's fourth. Bobby Labonte's just taken fifth away from Tony Stewart. Stick said, this could be the race for the win. Nadeau almost on the apron. Here goes Whoa. Junior for the race lead. Now that was a good example of what I was talking about, the handle going away. He went in very hard. He noticed the eight car on the outside. He was too loose to let him go up there and keep the power on. That's a move a 25-year-old can make. Dale Earnhardt Jr. led most of the first 49 laps of this event, 47 of the first 49. He's not been out in front since, except for a couple of laps at 158 and 159. Now, seven laps to halfway. Dale Jr. goes to the point as weather threatens. Green flag pit stops have begun. There is the third-place car, Jerry Nadeau in, Mike Hogwood. And Jerry Nadeau is not near as happy at this car as he was at the beginning of the race. So they are going to make a major chassis adjustment on the car to try to tighten it up just a little bit. Left sides are on. Nadeau is down and away. 17 flat. Jerry Nadeau, Nadeau that we just saw go by led so much of this event earlier in the evening. He's led 100 of the 236 laps. But when he came down pit road for his service just a few laps ago, Buddy's eagle eye caught something there, a little funny in the right side of the car. Well, the biggest thing I noticed is the right side of that car is, well, I understand that Mike Hogwood has the report on the 25. Let's go down and, and hear what's wrong. Well, Buddy, just before he came in for that pit stop, he brushed up against the wall. It was a scary moment for the entire team, and especially for the driver, Jerry Nadeau. Now his crew chief, Tony Burris, says, take a deep breath. We're going to be okay. They had a great pit stop. He didn't lose any positions. He is running third. You saw when the car came by the frame there, buddy, that right side paint not as pristine as it was before. Yeah, it was pretty well damaged, but the good part was the tires didn't have any damage. It was all sheet metal. Earnhardt Jr. beating Labonte off pit road, but they're going to be behind Jerry Nadeau, who has stayed on the racetrack under the caution flag for rain. Well, they're doing rain dances all around down here in the uh, Jerry Nadeau pits. Tony Fur, what's the story with the car? Well, we're just waiting on it to rain right now. These other guys went in the rain, and so we're going to try to do the same thing. Now, what about these reports that there's problems with the engine on the 25? Well, we're not sure. He said it was missing a little bit, and we're going to change boxes here once we get back up to RPM. We'll see then. We're not sure. It may be an addition box. But you want it to rain right now, big time. All right, Tony the rain Furr, dance the underway here. Tony Fur, the crew chief for leader Jerry Nadeau, watching the rain fall at Lowe's Motor Speedway in the Coca-Cola 600. We're coming back in a minute to see if we can restart this race. Almost guaranteed that they're going to do that. The question after that point will be, what's going to happen to Nadeau's car with the valve spring that's failed? Almost certainly he's lost enough horsepower. He's going to have a real tough time of it from here on. Well, that that is true. And, and uh, they, they were hoping that the range will keep on because the valve spring, he's not going to have the performance if that's the problem. But they also said they may be able to change the uh, ignition inside the car, and that might be the problem instead of a valve spring. So... You know, Jerry Nadeau's going to lose a tremendous amount of track position here, though. He'll have to go right to the back when he comes in. Yeah, and they're just guessing what the problem is right now. When they do get back up to full RPM and they change the ignition box, if that doesn't fix it, then they'll know it's something internal inside the engine, and they'll have a good idea their chances for victory tonight are going to be very much dimmer. Still, what a big night for Nadeau, who 10 years ago was racing go-karts, of all things, went from that to dirt track modifieds, the Barber Saab series, European form the Opals. He's worked as a roofer to pay the bills, mowed lawns, even towed show cars so that he could afford to race. And here tonight, he has dominated the front end of the Coca-Cola 600. Nadeau has led five times for 110 of the 257 laps that we've run tonight. Well, I just can't figure this out. Here comes Nadeau now at the one-to-go signal. And, and that's going to put him at the absolute tail end of all the cars that are on the lead lap. And why they hadn't decided to do this earlier is just... <laughs> An absolute mystery. It, it just doesn't seem to be a reasonable thing to do. But 
rolling the tire. That's a new rule this year. In fact, midway through the year, they have to get the tires away from the right side of the car, away from the right side of the pit box. If they don't do that, NASCAR will throw a penalty at them. And they also did a, a wedge adjustment on the left rear when he was stopped there. So Nader's going to come back out in 14th position for the restart. Jerry Nadeau trying to make up lost ground. 14th position is where he's fallen back to. He's not even up with the pack at this point. He's uh, a little bit off, so that engine problem obviously is manifesting itself further. But here's a guy that's just not making any progress. Remember that just when we went to the caution for rain, we got the report that there was a miss in Jerry Nadeau's engine. They speculated it might be an ignition box they were going to try and change to the backup system when we went back to full speed racing. Then they also speculated it might have been a valve spring going bad. And I would say by the fact that Nadeau has fallen off the back of the pack that it is the valve spring. And he's in some pretty serious trouble here with his, uh, what, 129 laps left to go in this race. Been talking about Jerry Nadeau and speculating that the engine problem is worsening. Mike Hogwood, how about it? Indeed it is. I just talked to Tony Furr and he, well, he had a dejected look on his face. And I looked up at him and he just looked at me and said, valve spring. Wow. And uh, he just told him to ride it out. But they're really down on horsepower right now. Jerry Nadeau has led 115 of the 273 laps tonight. Doesn't look like this is going to be the night for Winston Cup win number one. One of the real problems with valve springs is not just that the engine could get soft. That valve starts bouncing too deep into the cylinder, could bounce off a piston. That could be the end of the engine and the end of the night. Position. Caution. Caution. Jerry Nadeau. Well, the valve has spring. finally let go. Yep. Yep. There it is. And this takes the splash and dash pit stops out of the equation. We're going to see everybody come on to pit road here for tires and their final fuel stop. And a bad break for Ricky Rudd, who had to make that unscheduled stop. Everybody else gets to stop under caution now. Jerry Nadeau led 115 laps. He was the dominant driver for, say, miles 100 to 300 in this event. But you know what? He, he got the thing he needs the most, the confidence that I can race with these guys now. He's going to make the left-hand turn here, though, into the garage and become the sixth driver to not be running at the finish of this race. Let's hear from the man who was dominant earlier but now finds himself out of the race, Jerry Nadeau's with Marty Snyder. Well, he clearly had the best car, and uh, you knew at the rain delay the valve spring was going. How agonizing was it to try and ride it out? Not much you can do. I mean, we had, we probably had the best car here for sure. I mean, uh, just one of those deals. Uh, Got to thank Michael Hogan.com, Hendricks, everybody. Uh, everybody on pit road did an awesome job all day. Um, get him at Dover. As Jerry and I do, and uh, we said before the race, they had to win it. They had to not beat themselves, and they had an engine problem. Been plaguing them all year long, Jerry and I do, with the best car done this evening.